Thank you so much, Shubhadeep, for joining us. Most welcome. Uh, now, I'm sure you're aware of this that uh, design now from computers, mm -hmm. it has come to designing on iPads, right. even on mobile phone. Right. A very very uh, popular website, Canva. Canva.com. Now, recently they launched uh, an iOS application for design. It's right. an amateur design platform. That, yeah. Now, what I wanted to understand from you is how design used to happen before digitization, when before before computers came in. Right. Interesting work. Yeah. See, um, in design those days, I'm talking about. I'm starting from taking reference from Kolkata scenario right from the 50s to 60s to through 70s and 80s. There were two steps in design in general those days and we used to term them as the first step was layout just to show the client to take their approval and the next step after approval was used to be called as artwork which is practically for processing. Okay, so the initial stage, as I'm saying, it is uh, layout making. There were two things in that. One was black and white, and one was in color, as we do it now. When we used to do in black and white, or to conceive the design to start with, the art directors were to do the pencil scribbles on paper. And after doing that, we used to mount it on harder papers to present it to the client. And doing that in this process, the medium pencil was the most important element. Why? The pencil has got a tremendous latitude to control the tonal quality. Okay. So the art directors used to use mostly the bond papers, you know, sunlit bond papers, the different kinds of bond papers were available at that time. Why bond papers, if you ask me? Because bond paper was a semi-transparent paper. And the advantage is there was nice grain on that paper. So pencil used to behave very brilliantly, extremely brilliantly on that surface. So you can create pitch black, sharp lines, half tones, Okay, all the kinds of things could have, I mean, easily possible through pencil. And that was, he, he, this medium was so much regarded those times. And, and the, that particular bond paper, because it, it is, it's semi-translucent nature, anything you do at the first, and then take another fresh paper and put the original drawing and underneath, you can see those things you know, and improve upon that. So our director used to carry on, you know, uh, papers after papers, you know, taking one after another and uh, correcting the designs step by step to arrive at the final stage. Okay, and you know there were there was some training involved in that how to use pencil. Those are separate things, you know. We'll, we'll talk it later. And after that, it comes about the layouts to be finished in color. So you we used to use water-based colors. We didn't have the opportunity to use markers, color markers that you know, what I saw people using in the United States, you know, even in the 80s, you know, they used to use a lot of different kinds of thinner based markers on special paper was there for the markers to use. We never had that opportunity. So we used to use the water based poster color or watercolor. Okay. And for illustration making, we often choose, you know, uh, nice uh, cartridge paper or handmade paper to do the color illustrations. Okay. So that was the way, you know, we used to mount up layouts like you know color layouts was necessary for like brochures like for annual report covers or annual report inside pages sometimes well record slip designs okay those were required you know for, uh, say hoarding designs uh, we used to use colors you know for finishing those things right. or if it's a black and white newspaper advertisements there was no need, we never thought of you know, using you know, any special print or anything like that and a pencil was enough. I can show you some stuff like how we used to sure, use those sure, things sure, sure. and it was so nice looking and there was no uh, problem in understanding the, what the design is offering. It is very clear because it is, it is almost, I mean the lifelike. Okay, I will show you something.
suppose this is a design okay you can see it yeah. this is a design so it is done in pencil now you see is a almost hard 100 black mm -hmm. and here are the half tones okay now these are the typo we chose and look if you if you half close your eye mm -hmm. you will feel like that this is a body text absolutely okay and this is a kind of in a tonal quality the, the the whole i mean advertisement will be producing you know so even writing a reverse type mm -hmm. was not a difficult thing at all so it was very quick and it used to carry i'm telling you those days you know layouts finished in pencil by the art directors himself it used to carry their passion their emotional attachment with the particular particular page you know so many a times i have seen i'm giving an example when mr somesh sarkar the famous art director of clarion when he joined in thompson and he used to produce layouts for quality ice creams he used to do nice illustrations on paper okay it is approved but when the time has come for doing artworks and illustrations have been given the that illustration to make the final i have seen illustrators saying it is impossible to copy those illustrations because the emotion what somita used to have with paper with pencil mm -hmm. that we don't have that was the beauty of layouts done by the art director himself you know not by getting finished by the juniors in the studio mm -hmm. but anyway that that's a separate thing because those are those are practically not just layouts i consider those things as artwork art pieces unfortunately nobody has preserved those things like shomit das layouts was legendary i have seen those things and i do not think nobody will be ever be able to match those qualities in pencil how pencil behave on paper it's a pleasure for eyes <laughs> another question see uh, while writing a copy okay if there was an error Oh, yeah. If there was a mistake, yeah. uh, what was the process involved in redoing this stuff? Oh, in the layout stage there is no such problem because you know, I tell you, in the layout I have just shown you, it was just squiggles, okay, okay. but the body text will be there. Okay, if the headline is written wrong by the visualizer, then it has to be scrapped off. Another sheet of paper, do it again, not a problem. Do it from fresh. Do it from fresh. You have no opportunity to you know, uh, cover it up with in Photoshop or, or anything else. You know, right. It is not possible. And our directors used to have tremendous control over typography those days. Because he, he should have the quality like, you know, of thinking that what type will match this particular in design okay so they used to see the typeface in their mind's eye very clearly as if they are seeing the design in front of them and then doing it on paper that kind of perception one has to have you now that was the consideration so those days art directors i mean qualification if you ask me you know the primary qualification of the art director was the understanding of typography okay and another was their ability to illustrate with no skill of illustration, those days I'm talking about late 50s and early 60s, mm -hmm. you will never be able to become an art director. It was impossible because photography was not very strong those days, you know, remember. So these days we, we, we have so much control in, in, in editing photographs, you know, mm -hmm. changing colors, hues, you know, uh, tonal qualities. Nothing was available then, not even a good photograph in the, in, in the late 50s. Okay. Uh, Mr. Ahmed Ali, these and all these people in Calcutta, you know, they came pretty late in mid 60s. Mm -hmm. So those time, you know, making the illustration in such a manner, you know, it, it, it used to replace photograph. It has to replace photograph. I can remember those days, I mean, the, how was the look of the studios those days, you know. 20, 30 drawing boards, slanted in an angle. And art director used to sit with pencil working on that, okay. Taking one paper after another, putting on, on the previous design, correcting it once again, changing the proportions maybe sometime, you know, changing, shifting the positions, all these things. And when it is in color, mostly art directors used to do the illustration only. And that used to pass into the studio next. Mm -hmm. And the other elements of the design was handled by the studio guys. You know. That was the, the, the method those days, yeah. Okay. Some other examples, if you want to share? Well, uh, I said, you know, those days uh, in pre-digital era, 
one very important aspect uh, in visualizing thing uh, was working on papers on pencil and all these things and another thing was at the time of art working that was a tedious job tedious job why because today what we do we take the photograph scan take it in photoshop do the whatever editing is there you know then take the image uh, import it in illustrator place it correctly or in indesign mm -hmm. you know and put the types you know the, the vector elements on that you know so there's no hassle absolutely you can shift the position of the some types or some elements you know from here to there by dragging simply but those days it was practically impossible to do it that easily you can do that we used to do it but remember like in design in this you know in in, in other designs also I, I show you you know this is another design where uh, put it here so i am putting this logo here the headline here mm -hmm. look at this headline it is it is not not in a particular font but following a font right okay right. so it has to be art lettered there were specialized artists who had we should do this art lettering that was a very important part in studio those days okay so what we used to do while mounting a nice layout like you know uh, uh, show you this 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 particular layout mm -hmm. so this is a hand lettered thing mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. and this is a photograph in size getting pasted on top of the artwork okay and the body copy and the subheads and the logo some extra elements okay all these things used to come separately it has to be cut by a scissor or a blade mm -hmm. and the use of rubber cement was essential because that was the only only thing to to paste those loose elements on paper okay so used to use pencil guidelines on the main artwork mm -hmm. and place used to place those you know loose elements like body copy the uh, the the the, the subhead lines or the cross heads mm -hmm. or the logo element or some other design and and the sign of tag line you know everything was loose so the way we 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 just put it in 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 vector files in illustrator or in in design today the same way it is to cut manually and used to be put in 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 the right position in the layout so it was it was tremendously time consuming and it was it was it used to happen by the judgment of your eye okay now we are enlarging it 200 times 300 times 800 times okay there was no chance to do that so often i have seen the elderly people when very senior people using magnifying glass and touching it with the brushes mm -hmm. okay but how much can you enlarge to make a make a proper finish impossible so mostly the the today it is so much easy to tighten the kerning or loosen the kerning those days it has all the letters has to be separately cut and tightened or to be taken apart you know all the things with that so those days i can remember now we are typing on machine in word document you know the body copy mm -hmm. okay then take that you know into the design file and and choose the type what we want to put it you know we we select the weightage of the type mm -hmm. what will be leading what will be the kerning and all these things those days it was so much difficult we used to call them type setters you know who used to set these paragraphs or these letters or the headlines you know for the designers they, those were the special expresses okay so we used to order them okay for the headline 68 point you know uh, helvetica or gilsons gilsons was very much vogue in that time you know mm -hmm. times in times roman and all these things there were different kinds of things so for headline these kind of types for body copy 12 with 12 point times roman or gilsons light okay so order that and we used to tell them this will be the galley width okay it should not cross that you know and this will be the line breaking even okay so the easiness of comprehending by reading the i mean that that particular text you know was very important so that way those special expresses is to supply as the paragraph you know especially art paper printed on art papers you know good paper mm -hmm. so we used to cut them and paste it on things so this was a very tedious thing you know and the use of rubber cement because it was it was in in a, it is a solution kind of thing which was you know basically uh, prepared with petrol in it okay so when the printed stuff used to come from the type setters mm -hmm. those are the, i mean they used to use the pr printing ink mm -hmm. and if the printing ink is not properly dry it was so difficult to paste because the moment you put 
rubber cement underneath to paste it in the right place, you know, that ink used to be melt. So it was dangerous. It was dangerous. So you have to be very cautious. I mean, how minimum of rubber cement you can use you know, while taking the fresh printed stuff. Sometimes it was in hurry. The, the typeset has come, you know, and I have to release the artwork in next half an hour's time. So what do I do? I have to put it there with the rubber cement and I have to be very careful. <laughs> so there were different techniques like that, you know. Uh, so it was manually done, all manually done. If I want to make the, like I'll tell you, the letter T and Y, there's a huge amount of space in between. The letters like you know, V and A, all the type letters, you know, they used to be, we, we call it beard. Some extra areas are there, you know. So optically, this has to be tightened when they sit side by side. So all these things used to be done manually. You have to do it. Today, we, we done it digitally. It is a lot, lot more easier. We can just, with the pressure of key, we can tighten the letters. We can, or we can spread the letters. I mean, so that those days it was it was practically impossible, but possible with a lot of time. I can remember uh, it was it was 8:30 in the night. You know, I was working in in response those days, and I was doing an artwork for Dabur. So Mr. Ray uh, was the person who, who who was you know looking everything in response. They designed to definitely. So. He saw the first cut and he said, it's not coming to the, up to the mark. It is to be done again. I said, Mr. Ray, uh, it is 8.30 now. Um, I cannot order the typesetting again because they are closed already and I have not informed them to open till now. So how do we do it? He only looked at me and I can still remember, he said, spine doesn't break so easily. So that was the direction what he gave. So I... It took a minute to absorb that, went back to the studio because that time we had an op I mean, advantage of having a black and white uh, photo studio, specialized studio for the designers. Okay. So I took the earlier typeset and, and then copied it photographically, mm -hmm. enlarged it mm -hmm. and manually cut each of those words to form the right alignment the line right breaking and and to achieve the right size what what i am thinking to make the layout correct and you won't believe by that process i made the artwork he took the early morning flight at four o'clock and it took us the entire night to produce the design and in these days one hour two hour max so that was the difference okay so I'm sure with digitization or with computers yeah. coming in, life has become yeah. a lot easier. Uh, not really easier. I tell you what was then. Those days, after conceiving the idea, the art directors, the studios were engrossed heavily to mount it up technically. Okay. You can say if my time is, uh, say, 100. Okay. So, only for the art directors, they used to spend max to max, you know, 20 percent of that 100 to think about the layout, because 80 percent was involved in achieving it technically, okay, manually. So there are so many different kinds of work. Now, the thing has reversed. We can easily put 80 percent of the time to think, mm -hmm. and only 20 percent time, you know, to mount it up technically. Right. So, Right. So the situation just yes. reversed, you know. In case of 80% technical things and 20% thinking, now almost 80, 90% you can take for thinking because computer has made it so easy. But I'm saying it easy, but it is not always very easy. If the person is not well conversant with the software, then it will take longer time. And right. a person who knows it right, right. that's it. <laughs> right, 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 right. The important role was reprography. Because what is the role of artwork? to make the design land on paper or any surface for that matter. So without understanding reprography, making design is difficult not only, mm -hmm. to some extent is not right and impossible because you don't know where you are landing up. So those days our directors had good knowledge on reproduction. Now with latest offset technology, 
printers can do wonders and they can do anything you just have to say you have to tell i want this kind of things at the end of it and they will make it happen the printers today are so knowledgeable but those days printers were not in a position to offer so much because of the technology and that too in india and that too in kolkata we didn't have any everything with us so like offset came very late in kolkata you know in the mid 80s okay we used to have handset type setting mm -hmm. the photo set type set came well in the early 80s in kolkata and when computer came in the computer came in kolkata when i was in response yes i saw macintosh classic macintosh lc1 and lc2 that was in the time when i was with thompson i'm talking about 1991 okay so slowly slowly uh, the design process evolved and it offered the creative people more time more quality time for thinking and equally the offset printing method and all these things really helped the designers to come up with outstanding ideas same thing what you saw what you saw and um, in in those days if you just take out i mean references from the past you know you'll see uh, the flaws you know not flaws really i mean the shortcomings in designing communications mm -hmm. which are practically practically does i mean we will see any problem here today so that's it uh, this is something you know it is all about uh, manual era what i'm talking about and uh, reprography is another area what uh, which which will take more time to explain you but we can have another session for it session for this. <laughs> sure thank you so much thank you Most so welcome. much welcome i love to i love to be I here i think i think it was important for us to know the history and uh, uh from my half big knowledge i think i'm <laughs> not really not no, no. still more educated <coughs> now but i think this is an endless subject yes 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 uh, yes it is very important to know the background you know the how we evolved you know over a period of time it is right, very important right, because right. it it is just a building process you know right. nothing comes suddenly you know so if you look at the uh, the past you know mm -hmm. there are many things which are coming back also you know sure sure you know, sure sure, sure. sure. So we can take advantage from the history that way. Absolutely, absolutely. Once nice again, joining you. you. Thank you. Thank, thank, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah.